And then question 202, what relationship with God and Christ has begun at baptism? Baptism permanently relates a person to God. That relationship can never be wiped out. If a person is baptized, the person is baptized. Even if the person decides to go back to the ways of sin, the character of baptism, that seal of baptism cannot be erased. Mm -hmm. It cannot be wiped out. So that relationship remains either to the person's joy and glory in heaven or to the person's shame and suffering in hell. Baptism also joins the person to Christ, gives the person a share in Christ, who is priest, prophet, and king. As we say in Catholic theology, it gives the baptized person a share in the priesthood of Christ. That means that priesthood which is common to all the baptized, in the sense in which St. Peter says, you are a holy nation, a people set apart, a priestly nation. That is, you are a nation Christ has taken to himself, and of you, Christ is your leader in the worship offered to God. Yes. Christ is the priest. We are his members. Every baptized person shares in that worship which of which Christ is the leader, that is the public worship mm -hmm. of the church. Every baptized person shares. In that sense, we talk of the general priesthood of all the baptized, mm -hmm. as opposed to the ordained priesthood mm -hmm. of deacons, priests, and bishops. We, we'll talk about that one afterwards. I think that's the whole, what your comments uh, are so important because I think the Holy Father was drawing back to the sacrament of baptism and telling the laity that by the sacrament they have an obligation to evangelize and to bring others into the faith, that they are part of the priesthood. And, and, uh, and there is this difference between the sacramental priesthood and the royal priesthood of the laity, but the laity have an obligation to evangelize by the very rites of the sacrament. Yes, they have. Because by the very fact of baptism, they become members of yes. Christ. They share in Christ who prayed and sacrificed himself and who also preached mm -hmm. and spread the kingdom of God. The, every baptized person has a share in that life and mission. Yes. Not only the life, right. but the assignment yeah. which comes as a consequence. It's not therefore a luxury mm -hmm. for some. Although the ordained priest will have his own specific right. share. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I think, though, some peep, some laity, as we know, uh, our, our Protestant brethren evangelize, many of them, and reach out and, and, and are constantly drawing new people into their churches. Our Catholic laity, uh, we sort of sit back and let you do it, let the priest do it. And uh, we don't feel that we're ob obligated to, to really evangelize. And I think this is, we don't need someone's permission to evangelize, do we? Do we have to go to our parish priest and say, Father, can, do I, can I talk about the faith to people at work or to my neighbor? We don't need permission to evangelize, do we? We don't. Well, it's an obligation, isn't it? It is an obligation yes. which we should fulfill. And when the baptized person shares the faith, that baptized person is not doing a favor to the parish priest mm -hmm. or to the bishop. The, the person is carrying out the person's assignment yeah. as a member of Christ, right. as a member of the church, mm -hmm. as a, a, a follower of Christ. It is necessary to be aware of that. Baptism, our day of baptism is the most important day mm -hmm. in our lives. The That's next most important day is the day we die. That's something. Mm -hmm. I think this is so important because I guess it was Ascension Thursday, Christ stood there and said, go out and teach all nations. And he just wasn't talking to the apostles. He was talking to the entire church at that time. Oh, yes. And that was the supreme mandate. At the mm -hmm. very moment he was to go up to heaven on mm -hmm. Ascension Day. Right. He repeated that. Yes. Earlier in his public ministry, he had sent them to preach. Mm -hmm. But at the supreme moment before going up to heaven, he enunciated it in a very solemn way. Yes. All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go in therefore yes. 
yeah. as a consequence, teach you all nations. Mm -hmm. And I think the laity have an inferiority complex to teach, and we have to be careful in the church because the church, we do, we have a hierarchical structure and the teachings are very methodical, they're not off the wall. But now with videotape, with this catechism, for example, the laity now can confidently get others into their home, watch the videos, look at the tape, look at the books, read it, learn their faith. Uh, and now we, now we are in an age where we can take competent teachers on video and the laity can take them out to their neighbors and their friends and really evangelize. And, and I guess the, what, what Jesus was saying in Ascension Thursday, teach all nations. Now we can teach all nations. Yeah, of course, evangelize does mean to teach the faith. Yes. But it doesn't mean necessarily teaching. Yes. Just a life of good example mm -hmm. in the family, in your profession, where you are working, right. where you are attending a business meeting, national, international, political meeting, in parliament, in Congress, in the Senate, in the United Nations. If the lay person will be a good witness of mm -hmm. Christ there, that lay person is evangelizing. evangelizing uh, teaching the faith, yes. Obviously, there would be what we call hierarchical authority, mm -hmm. what we discussed in another talk, yes. Majest teaching authority of the church, which is assigned just to the pope and the bishops. Right. But that is in the sense of speaking authoritatively mm -hmm. for the whole church. Now, every Christian is not called every day to be declaring doctrine in right. that way. But every Christian is called to share mm -hmm. the faith. That Christ whom we love, who gives meaning to our life. Have you nothing to say about him at all? Mm -hmm. You can't say a thing about Christ, but you said you love him. <laughs> you said you were baptized. Right. You said you are his member. You said he is your leader. You said he died for you, and you can't say a thing about him. Mm -hmm. You are not serious. <laughs> That's right. Well, this is what's happening. The people just sort of freeze up. They, well, they, somebody they should tell them to get up. The grass <laughs> is growing under their feet. That's right. And it's this sacrament that is, it is empowering them to, to evangelize and to share their faith. Yes. Faith and love lead to desire to share. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. If I really believe my faith is the most precious thing I have on earth, I shall desire yeah. to share it with others. Right. And if I see those who don't know Christ or who are cold in their faith, mm -hmm. who have lapsed back, I cannot rest until I share it with every one of them. Mm -hmm. As St. Paul says, the love of Christ urges us on, remembering that if one died for all of us, mm -hmm. we must do something about it. Yes. Uh -huh. One other thing before we get off the sacrament of baptism, if, if a, an adult is uh, in mortal sin and he goes, uh, he or she goes and, and is baptized, all of their sins are forgiven then throughout their whole life. Is that right? And they don't even have to go to confession. Is that correct? It is correct. If a grown-up person receives baptism mm -hmm. with sufficient repentance for sins, Baptism will forgive both original sin, mm -hmm. which the person inherited from Adam and Eve, and personal sins, which that person has ever committed. There will be no need to confess them. So there will have to be no general confession or anything. Everything, what a beautiful power when you imagine that. I mean, it's no small matter. It's incredible. Everything is wiped away, totally clean. So that, yes. that person is starting just like a little infant with a totally innocent soul. That's what it means. Mm. Because God cannot forgive some sins and leave some others unforgiven. Yes. So either all of them are forgiven uh -huh. or none of them is forgiven. Wow. That just shows you the power of the sacrament. Yeah, that is why when a person has, let us say, two or three sins, goes to confession and they are big sins, hides one of them, confesses two. Mm -hmm. They are not forgiven. That's right. Because how can you have divine, either you have divine life or you don't have it. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are no... There's no possibility in between. Yes. So what a great gift of, of someone that's an adult to enter into the sacrament of uh, a baptism to be certain that he comes out of that sacrament totally clean of all sin, original sin and actual sin. That's what it means.